All right, guys, it's Sam over here at Drone Nerds, and today I'm joined with Todd from Blue Vigil. Todd, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today we're going to actually be talking about your tether solution. Cool. Um, so well, some things I wanted to go over here. This is made in the USA. It's made in Virginia. Made in Virginia. Um, and it's a drone agnostic tether system. That's right. It works with just about any commercial grade drone. Okay. Yep. And then one of the main key features today that we're going to be showing is going to be the integration with the Matrice 210 series, right? That's the most popular thing right now. Okay. This thing here, this is called the BRM or battery replacement module. You notice on the end here, we have an XT90 connector. Any drone that, that uh, is powered by a generic 6S LiPo battery mm -hmm. does not need any of these accessories. This, this accessory kit really is just for DJI. Perfect. So uh, on a drone that takes a 6S LiPo battery, you could actually take that battery out completely altogether and plug this directly into it. Okay. Yep. Good to know. Okay. Good to know. Absolutely. Some of the key features that we're going to talk about here about this tethered solution, you have about 50 meters that come with this. You also have an optional 30 meter extension kit. So 50 meters by itself is about 164 feet that you're going to get out of it. And then... Then the 30 meters on top of that is another 100 feet. Yep. Now, what's important to, to understand is that 30 meter extension is not going to be inside the box. So mm -hmm. we have the, the, the cable here inside the box. We have 50 meters. It's a reactive spool. As the drone comes up, it pulls out. As the drone goes down, it pays back in again. Uh, there's a fleeter so that it stays on the spool evenly. If you have the 30 meter extension, it's not going to be inside the box. It has to be outside. The spool is full at 50 meters. Perfect. The total weight on it is more or less about 35, 40 pounds on there. That's right, about 35 so, pounds. Yeah, so it's a very lightweight case. It's easy to just throw in the back of a truck. It's something simple to just go on site with. Yep. And it's very robust as from what I can see, this is essentially a weatherproof case. That's correct. All right, but as long as it's closed, it's weatherproof. The minute it's opened up, you're exposed. Well, we do have a little bit of um, uh, weatherproofing, I guess you could say. It's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use this in a torrential downpour. But then again, you're not flying a drone, a drone in that sort of weather either. Right. Um, the the spool and the electronics are separated out, and there is a little bit of um, uh, ability to withstand some moisture if it's if it's foggy or damp or right. the, the 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 tether falls into wet grass or something like that you'll be fine. Okay, Yeah. perfect. So there is some redundancy mm -hmm. built in. And, you know, as far as this goes on the market, this is one of the most cost-efficient tether solutions available. It fits in almost every municipal budget. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And now, something I wanted to kind of go over with you, Todd, if you could explain it, what's actually included in this compartment mm -hmm. kit from DJI? Sure. Or to the DJIs? And how do we actually integrate it onto the unit? Okay. So let's first talk about the, the way the system comes. Sure. We have the, the tether uh, system, the, the case here, which mm -hmm. is the RS-1000, has 50 meters of cable, like you said. Typically, it is always shipped with this battery replacement module, the BRM. Okay. So the way the system works is we have very high voltage of cur DC current going up this very thin cable. The cable has to be thin because, remember, every inch you go up, you have to carry an inch of cable with you. So we have high voltage going up here. This device here actually takes that high voltage and converts it down to something the drone can use. So we have about 400 volts going up. Coming out this end here is about 23 and a half volts. Right. Now that's an important number to remember, and I'll explain why in just a minute. So these things typically come together. The DJI accessory kit is uh, it's an add-on. It doesn't come standard with with the system. Mm -hmm. um, I think Drone Nerds packages it to, uh, with the, with yes. every system. Uh, but so in the inside the kit. Uh, you have a couple of things, and this is actually three parts in my hand here. We have the this part here, which is the adapter, uh, which goes between the battery and the drone. So you see there's pins in the front, there's pins in the back. And you see there's a XT90 uh, pigtail on here. This is actually how we get the um, uh, power from the tether, from the battery replacement module, into the drone itself. There's and a if I can just stop real quick, yeah. what's great about that too is that it's not dependent on a firmware from DJI or anything like That's that. Right. So if there's anything that ever comes out from DJI that has a new firmware or anything like that, it doesn't limit you from actually flying. You are using the same batteries that right. you would otherwise use without a tether. Right. And I'll go through the modification in just a second so sure. I can show it to you. Okay. The second part is that's in my hand here is this little piece in the middle here. It's, we call this the standoff. Okay, and this uh, little plastic piece here is only, uh, it's just that, it's a standoff, it's a little spacer, and uh, the reason we have it here is because we could use this kit with TB50 and TB55 batteries, mm -hmm. and the TB55 battery is a little bit wider, yep. you need the extra space here. The last part that's in my hand is the bracket. This holds the battery replacement module onto the drone, just like that. In addition, what's not included in the, in the DJI kit is a TB50 battery that's been modified. 
So what we've done here is we cut notches in the back here. And the reason is because the width of this adapter is going to get make this battery stick out just a little bit from its original spacing. And if it if the battery doesn't click into place, the drone will not take off. So what we've done is we've we've cut these notches here so that when you slide the battery in with the adapter, it will click into place. And this is something that we recommend that you let us do. Here at Droners, we do offer the battery as an add-on for this right. um, because you are you are going into a lipo cell essentially. When you're cutting into this here, you're going to be able to see the cells that are inside of it. So leave it to a professional to install for you. Uh, one of the things that you need to uh, keep in mind is, is even after this battery is modified, because these two notches are still here, you can use this battery without the tether. Hmm. So it can be used with and without the tether. Also included in the uh, DJI accessory kit is this bra is this brace with the with the strap and the carabiner. Mm -hmm. uh, included with that as well are a couple of screws. So uh, what you would do is there's there's two screws that come standard in the Matrice 200 or 210. You remove those two small factory screws and you replace them with uh, the this uh, brace okay. with the two longer screws and then you put the carabiner and the strap on there. The purpose of this really is to keep the tension off of this connector. Mm -hmm. it's, it's right on this carabiner here. And so no matter how hard you pull on it, it's going to remain in the center on the center of gravity or the center of the drone here. Okay. Uh, it's going to keep the tension off this barrel connector and it's going to stay right where it's supposed to, to stay in the middle of the drone. Yeah, and something important to mention too is that this doesn't actually affect anything with the camera system or any of the sensors underneath the drone as That's well. right, it's behind the gimbal. So there's a couple of things that you probably um, need to keep in mind when you're flying uh, Matrice 210 or 200 with the tether system. Mm -hmm. The telemetry that you're getting from the DJI um, tablet shows how much battery life you have left in a percentage. Yeah. When these batteries are fully charged, they're 25.2 volts. And as I mentioned earlier, there's about 23 and a half coming from the tether. So what's gonna naturally happen is that these batteries are gonna deplete from 25.2 down to the tether voltage of 23.5. The faster they deplete, the lower the percentage number showing on the telemetry on the tablet is gonna show. It's a calculation that DJI has put in their algorithm, mm -hmm. right? And the speed that it goes from 100% down to 23.5 volts is going to be calculated and shown as a percentage. It makes people a little nervous when it gets very low. The truth of the matter is you're always going to have 23.5 volts because that's what's coming off of this uh, battery replacement module. So even though it shows a relatively low percentage, you're not in any danger of crashing the drone. You're just right. getting a calculation readout. You're just readout. getting a calculation readout. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. To make uh, that number stay up a little higher mm -hmm. and make the pilots feel a little bit more comfortable, and as good practice as far as flying on a tether, mm -hmm. we highly recommend that you read the guidelines on how to fly. The most important thing is don't overstress your drone. This system only pays out at about three feet per second, one meter per second. That's it. This drone could fly much faster than that. It can climb much faster. In fact, this drone might even be able to lift this entire uh, system off the ground if it goes fast enough. Yeah. Probably in our, not. In, in our video demonstration, yeah. um, we actually did that. Okay. When we were trying to get it to show how, if it feeds out too quickly, it picked up the box a little bit. But it's it's not gonna it's not gonna pay out any faster. The right. harder you pull, it's still not gonna pay out any faster. If you climb slowly, if mm -hmm. you climb at, at uh, one meter per second or less. Yeah then you're not going to overstress the drone. Uh, you're not going to have a lower percentage because it's going to uh, be able to, to deplete at a slower rate. Right. Okay. And you're going to get, get a higher uh, uh, percentage on the telemetry. Yeah. And it's going to make people a little less nervous. The other thing is it's common sense. Let's, yeah. let's not overstress the drone under any circumstances, but you, you understand there's now there's an additional load here. Right. Every inch you go up, you've got an inch of cable. All right. You've got to pull it. You've got to carry it. Be gentle with it. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, there's no reason that you have to be aggressive when you're climbing on a tether. Absolutely. And for all the pilots, I mean, for me, it was a quarter to a half throttle push. That's what was really where I was getting that smooth feed coming off of the tether solution. Mm -hmm. And the drone wasn't jerky. I wasn't overstressing the motors. Didn't hear any fight back at all. It was just a nice, easy descent. All right. Now, some of the key features and some of the key applications that we have here that we see is really a lot of uh, public safety, you know, police uh, using this for crowd monitoring, crowd control. 
fire departments are using these things or deploying them on long burns, being able to see where they can actually put the trucks around the fire, find the live burn sites. That's right. Um, another huge aspect that we see is asset monitoring. You know, railroad companies, uh, mining companies, construction companies wanting to see just what's going on throughout the day exactly. at their sites. You That's know, right. they're running these tether systems. Mm -hmm. And what's great, again, is not only is this industrial, I mean, it's very aerated as well. So, I mean, if dust gets in there, anything gets in there, it's a simple blow it out, clean it up, wipe it down, and you're good to go. That's right. Yeah, and, and uh, we actually have uh, this panel here that you saw you can inspect the cable for fraying or wearing or anything. If it's dirty, if it has any debris, you can pull it out, clean it off, turn it back on, it spools itself back in. Right. Yeah, you can maintain it yourself. And then, you know, the last thing I want to touch on, Todd, is so what kind of warranty are we looking on these things? It's a one-year warranty. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if there's any real problems between then and now, we're, we're very interested to uh, learn about what our users are experiencing, what different uses they have. Um, you know, we get calls all the time about people who are uh, using it for unusual things. We have a guy who's uh, uh, using it for anti-poaching purposes in South Africa, and okay. uh, he's, he's running it off the back of a moving pickup truck. And okay, so there's, there's interesting things that we're learning about how, how to fly under those, those circumstances. Yep. We have people who are using it uh, uh, in the maritime industry. Um, cargo ships are using it to, to get an idea of what they're in for as far as going through a channel or a port or something like that. Right. So, yeah, and um, that that is a, a situation where um, you have a moving platform, you have mm -hmm. a moving drone, it's constantly adjusting back and forth, it's a saltwater environment or a dusty environment, right. and we're, we're always trying to, to improve on uh, the product, and so we, we'd like to hear about situations that people get themselves into uh, when they use our product. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, variables are, variables are going to change for mm -hmm. every single industry. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's very important to know, yep. the warranty that you guys have on there. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that? Uh, other than that, uh, just... Uh, uh, I, this can be used anywhere in the world. You can put uh, 220 or 110 in there okay. uh, as far as the AC power is concerned. Uh, it outputs 1,500 watts of power, which is good for about 10 kilograms of drone. Okay. So 22, 23 pounds of, of, of drone. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, our customers use this drone in the field for 48 consecutive hours yep. uh, and another one I think for 27 consecutive hours both in in very very hot dry yep. arid conditions desertous uh, areas yeah desertous yeah. areas and um, uh, we were we were very pleased when we heard that it, it, it uh, did exactly what it was supposed to do for that, that only, only reason it came down is because they had to pack up and go that's correct <laughs> yeah. so yep. great um, Todd thanks again we're really excited to have Blue Vigil on board here we're really excited to carry the product be able to have it as an option for all of our uh, customers and we really appreciate you being here. And we're very happy to be uh, uh, working with Drone Nerds and, and supporting our system and distributing to our customers. Absolutely. Guys, if you have any questions or any comments or anything like that on the Blue Vigil system, if you want to know what the price points are, just give us a call over here at Drone Nerds. We'd be more than happy to help.